What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS 3, otherwise known by some people as Steam Deck OS, running on the brand new Minus Forum HX90G mini gaming PC. If you're not familiar with this little gaming PC, that's totally fine. It's brand new to the market. I have created one other video with it running Windows, and this thing is an absolute beast for the form factor. I mean, I've had a really good time with this thing. It does great at 1080p Ultra and even 1440p medium high settings. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. But in this one, I want to see how it handles Linux. Now, I personally don't have much experience with mobile GPUs and SteamOS 3, so I'm not exactly sure how this thing is going to perform. But we're going to find out in this video. And real quick, I just wanted to give you a size comparison here. As you can see, this is a really small PC, especially for the power it's packing. Minus Forum does have this up for pre-order over on their website. You can pick it up in a bare bones form factor or up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It's actually got two M.2 slots in here so we can easily upgrade the storage. And it comes included with a 260 watt power supply. But as for specs, for the CPU we've got the Ryzen 9 5900HX, 8 cores, 16 threads. We've got a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz and a turbo up to 4.6. But what makes this mini PC so special are the discrete graphics. This actually has a Radeon RX 660M with 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM. And I'll tell you right now that gaming performance in Windows with this mini PC kind of blew me away. I mean, I was really surprised by what this thing can do. But in this video, we're going to be testing out SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. And I've got it installed on a 1TB Crucial M.2 NVMe SSD. Alright, so let's go ahead and boot this up. I've got Hollow ISO installed on that one terabyte drive. And to tell you the truth, I haven't messed around with uh, SteamOS 3 on many mobile GPUs, except for obviously the Steam Deck itself. So this has that 660M, which is a mobile CPU along with a mobile processor. And the GPU here, the 660M, should be running at about 100 watts. At least that's what it does in Windows. But unfortunately, in Linux here, I'm not getting great power management. I have seen it jump up to 100 watts with The Witcher 3, but then when I move over to another game, it's running at about 30 watts. So we're not using that full GPU, and it's really coming down to SteamOS's power management. And that's really kind of holding us back with SteamOS here. Just right off the bat, I was getting way better performance in Windows versus Linux on this machine. And finally, that connected for me. So we've got that Steam controller connected, and it's really hard to use. I'm not a huge fan of it when it comes to gaming, especially fighting games. It's definitely possible to use it, and it does give you kind of more of a Steam Deck feel using the Steam controller itself. But I'd personally rather be using something like an Xbox controller or even a PS4 controller. And yes, we do have access to that Steam performance overlay. And we do have system-wide FSR, we can use half-rate shading. Basically, the only thing that's not going to work here is controlling the GPU clock and the CPU TDP. So if we try to enable this here, it's just not going to do anything for it because we're using a totally different CPU than the Steam Deck does. But all of the other performance tweaks here will work, and we can even limit the frame rate. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming to see how this thing performs. And we're going to start out here with Spider-Man Remastered. This has kind of been hit or miss on Linux for me with different systems, so we'll see how this thing can handle it. Alright, here's Spider-Man Remastered, and I was a little afraid that this was going to happen. It seems that every other time I test this game out with a new system in SteamOS, I get really bad performance. Not exactly sure if it's coming down to the game or not, but in this case I really do think it is because no matter what resolution I choose here, I'm getting basically the same performance. I can go from 720p up to 1440p at medium settings here and all in between and still get this kind of frame rate that we're seeing here. Now in Windows, it actually runs this game at 1440p high with FSR set to quality, a little over 60 FPS, and if you just turn VSync on, I mean, you could definitely run it like that on Windows. So yeah, I've seen this a couple times with different systems that I've tested with SteamOS, and I do think it's the game and not the drivers. Moving over to The Witcher 3, this one performs really well on this machine in Linux. We're at 1440p, high settings, and we can get an average of around 78 FPS. Now at 1080, you can go ahead and max this out, I would definitely turn Hairworks off. But if you don't mind playing this game at high settings, which it still looks absolutely amazing, you can do 1440p on this little machine in Linux.
checking out Doom Eternal, and I had a feeling that this was going to work great because uh, everything that I've tested this on in Linux, I mean, I've just had really good luck with it. Uses the Vulkan back end. We're at 1440p ultra settings, and yeah, we're running way over 60 here. Project Cars 2, still one of my favorite racing games. 1440p, high settings, well over 100 FPS, and I kind of expected it. I know it's an older one, but it's still a lot of fun to play, and this little machine is powering right through it in Linux. Always like to throw at least one fighting game in. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in. So we've got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite running really well here, maxed out 1440p. I also tested Injustice 2, and that's one of those games that's going to perform very well on the HX90G. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, medium settings, FSR set to balanced. I actually thought we'd get a little better out of this. I've had really good luck with Cyberpunk 2077 in Linux, and it does run much better on this machine in Windows. And finally here, Elden Ring. So with this, I had to drop it down to 1080p, so we're at 1080p high settings. Not bad, but uh, in Windows, 1440p high medium mix, we can get a steady 60 out of it. With Hollow ISO or Steam OS, as we know, we also have desktop mode, and this is no different. So if I head over here to our power settings, we can switch over to desktop mode just to show you real quick. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted to use this as a Linux desktop PC with SteamOS 3, it's totally possible to do so. Right now, I've got a mouse and keyboard connected, but if you do have a Steam controller, you can use the Steam controller just like kind of a trackpad, just like the Steam Deck has built in. And yeah, I mean, everything here is functioning really well with the HX90G. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are working here with Linux. We have access to the Discover Store, so we can go through here, download our favorite applications. You want to do some video editing, some photo editing. This little machine definitely has more than enough power for that. And not to mention emulation. In the first video I did with the HX90G running Windows, we tested out PS2, Wii U, Xbox 360, and PS3. This thing's going to handle it all. And, uh, you know, when it comes to, like, PS2 emulation... Sometimes you do get better performance in Linux, given, you know, the OpenGL drivers here. But with the newer development builds of PCSX2, we have access to Vulkan in both. But even in Windows, just using the DirectX 11 back in with PS2, I was able to do everything that I wanted at 4K. I mean, it really does perform very, very well for emulation. So in the end, yes, you can run SteamOS 3 on the HX90G, but in my experience so far, I'm just getting way better performance in Windows, and I really think it comes down to power management with SteamOS. I didn't see that 660M hit the kind of clocks and wattages that I was seeing in Windows, and I think that's really holding it back using Linux on this machine, at least at the time of making this video, but there's still time before this officially releases to the public, so maybe in that time frame, we'll get some better optimizations for this little chipset here in Linux, and then they can be implemented in SteamOS. Before I wrap this video up, since we weren't seeing super great performance with Spider-Man Remastered, I just wanted to show you how it performed in Windows. 1440p, very high settings, FSR set to quality. If you lock this at 60, it's going to run it at 60 just fine at 1440p. But as you saw in Linux, we just weren't hitting those kind of clocks on the GPU. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will be keeping an eye on the status of Linux with this little machine. I'm going to test a few more distros just to see if we can get some better power management out of it. But if you're interested in checking out the performance that this thing can really put out with Windows, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the HX90G, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to leave a few links to Menace Forum in case you want to learn more about this thing. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.